Well, hey there, friends, and welcome back to the Creative Shop Talk podcast. I'm your host, Wendy Batten, and I'm so happy that you are here. I am knee deep as I share this as I start off this podcast. I am knee deep in holiday boot camp planning. We are <laughs> we are diving in, and I cannot wait to share some of the changes that we are making for the holiday boot camp. I've been working on it most of May. This is June that this podcast is recording and launching, releasing. I don't know. What do we say about podcasting? Anyhow, I'm just, I'm all in the holiday spirit is what I can tell you. And maybe you are too. Maybe you've got your ordering in and all of those fun things. And I just want to plant a seed. I just want to plant that seed for you that we always want to start planning early. So the earlier than it's over, not over, that doesn't sound right, but we're ready. We're ready for what's coming. We're ready for the holidays. So I have a lot of things to help you get ready this year. So anyhow, planting that seed. On another note, today we are going to be talking about continuing to talk about relationship marketing and visibility strategy, specifically in relationship marketing today. But before we jump into today's episode, I have this like a completely unplanned thing to talk about because of something that just happened. And I'm an oversharer, as many of you know, but I just wanted to remind you, and I know you know this, but sometimes we need to hear things over and over again. I do. Anyway, I come from a place where I need to hear it over and over. And that is that things we do are not always going to work out. (laughs) We're going to try things and they're not going to work out, or we're going to get a no. And, or we're like, well, that didn't go as planned. Maybe it's an event, maybe it's, you know, and some of the things we're going to talk about today might, you know, might trigger that, like, I can't do that, or they're just saying no. And I just want to remind you not to make assumptions. But it's okay, if things don't work out, we have to try and keep experimenting. I mean, even with buying inventory, right, we all know we make bad buys sometimes. And, you know, we just sometimes we just we're human, right? We're human. And today, so that also goes with trying new tech, trying new things, you know, trying new, I don't know, skills that we're trying to learn, we need to keep building those skills. So totally off topic about relationship marketing, but I was trying a new tech today for the podcast. And to be honest, I got really frustrated with it. But I got so far with learning it. And then it all went in my world, we say like, you know, up upside down, it just went like tits up is what I'm going to say. But anyway, it just went sideways. <laughs> like, okay, let's take a breath. We learned what we don't know how to do. Like I now know what I don't know how to do. <laughs> so I know I have to go out and get some specific help. But without actually taking action and trying it, I would never, I would never have known that that thing that I need to try is there. I don't know, or I have, I don't know how to ask for help if I don't know what it is I don't know. So I tried it, I experimented, I played with some things. I said, okay, not today. I'm back to my regular (laughs) podcast software, I guess, if that's the word. And we'll, we'll make some notes and we're going to go and we're going to try it again. So things don't always go as planned. That was my plan today. Did not plan to spend, you know, two hours mucking around with that today, but that's what happened so I just want to encourage you as you're trying new things in your business, as you're in your retail business, as you're growing and as your the needs of your business grow, as the needs of your client grow, we have to evolve as leaders, right? We have to evolve as business owners. We're always learning. I say that all the time here, you know, we're, we're in a never ending learning journey here as independent specialty retailers, it's just never going to end. So I just want to remind you before I jump into today's podcast to be always open to new learning new things and to understanding that, hey, it's not always going to go as planned. And that's okay. That's all right, right? We're, we're, we're human. It's not always going to go perfect. But there's also a great I don't know, pride and great comfort and great celebration and, re- and and rewards, I guess, on the other side of pushing through the heart. So anyway, all that to say, we're going to talk today about relationship marketing and what that looks like in the visibility strategy for your brand. So go grab a coffee, grab a pen, whatever you're doing. I hope you get your earbuds in. If you're out walking, this one might be one that you that you might want to listen to a couple of times. I have some thoughts around this and some action steps for you. So let's get to it. Running a retail business doesn't have to be so hard. Welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast, the go-to podcast for creative shop owners, studio owners, and independent retailers. I'm your host, Wendy Batten, retail business coach and mentor. 
Each week, I'll share simple, proven business strategies, inspiring stories from fellow retailers, and advice from industry experts. Together, we're going to work to find the success you want from your retail business with more profits in your till and a little more joy in your life. Okay, first of all, I want to sort of we all, I want to explain, I guess, we all know that, you know, rising tides lift all boats. Trust me, I know that I'm looking at boats right now, you know, I live many of you know, if you're longtime listeners, I live on the ocean, and I literally watch a rising tide lift all the boats, like it's the energy and the force of, you know, something lifting everybody together. There's power in the numbers. And there's also power in having a really strong reputation. And, referral network and I say regularly and I don't know whether this is I don't I don't know who said this originally I did not do the research on this so I say it all the time but you know your net worth worth is in your net work and you know that's maybe cold to say I don't know maybe your net worth but it really is and who knows you and who who do you know and there's a difference between word of mouth. And I, I hear clients, and, and again, we share this a lot on the podcast here about marketing. There's a difference between word of mouth marketing and just relying on that. I think that's a cop out. I think that that's great. And it's a bonus. And it's lovely. And it's wonderful. And it happens organically and holistically and naturally. But we have to be intentional about that. I teach a whole session on that in my sales accelerator and inside my inner circle about, you know, how do we intentionally get word of mouth. But this is different. This is more about like being intentional about building relationships that that really enhance your brand, enhance your business, enhance maybe your joy. I love doing, I love being, and I, I guess I love being around people who want to talk about my business and who are, are kind of talking, you know, what is that saying? They talk about you behind your back. Well, that's what you want, right? That's different. Relationship marketing is when we're getting intentional about who do we want to actually collaborate with? And I use the word collaborate a lot. And I think that gets mis misunderstood. I guess it's, we think collaborations, we think, okay, well, I'll share your tags and you, sh- or I'll share your cards, you share mine, or we'll do an event together. So it's that, but more. That's what relationship marketing is. So I want you to think in a little bit differently around how to build that brand reputation. And this can be in your town. And this also can be just a little bit broader if you have an e-commerce site or if you have a service that brings people in or a shop or a brand that brings people in from away. Thinking about who can we collaborate with, that's a win-win for both of you. So, and it's not just one, it's like you want to be known by many. (laughs) We want to be known by many. And one of the things I love thinking about first is always, always coming from customer first. So literally just had this conversation in my mastermind group about instead of top down leadership and how we do things, it needs to be bottom up. And you're going to hear me talk about that maybe a lot more this year. And bottom up means coming from what does the customer need first? And then, you know, we can bring it back up to how, how we can make that fit into our brand. So for example, if a customer says, you know, you should start selling hippopotamuses, we're not going to start selling because it doesn't make sense for our brand. But always coming from leadership top down, like what's the best for the company is not always the best for the customer. So think about that. Anyway, that's a whole other podcast, right? But I want you to think about what other things that your customers need in the very, very basic or, um, original, I don't know what you want to call it, like the, the easiest way to think about it is where else are they shopping? What else do they need? Where else are they, you know, where else are they hanging out? Again, in my visibility strategy series that we did here on the podcast, which I will say I've had incredible amount of you reach out and talk to me about that. So if you haven't listened to that three part series, I want to encourage you to go listen to that. We do talk about collaborations and how to be known in your community. And this is an expansion upon that. And again, I teach this inside my sales accelerator and inside the retailers inner circle. So we want to be intentional about what else our customers need and not just maybe thinking about 
whether they're going what local coffee shops they're going to or maybe where else they're buying you know what else are they buying in the community and who else could you align with and I believe strongly in aligning with brands that have the same values as me I'm not going to send people to I don't know I'm not going to start aligning myself with somebody who's just a big old jerk right? like you know I just don't do jerks right so think about it that way but where else like if you sell books and clients still need clothing but you could expand that they also buy tires and they need a lawyer and where else in your community could you collaborate like who else could you kind of become known to like who needs to know you we always talk about that here and you know what even your competitors so who could you become a referral to to your clients think of it that way so if you don't have blue socks and you sell socks and you know Susie down the street does that's okay send them down to buy blue socks there's power in referrals from a point of view of your clients and power of you know for you as well too it just it's good for your brand so I wanted to share specifically I guess why it works why collaborations work and I'm, I'm going to explain some different types of collaborations or different ways that you can build your network or why it works but first again you know what do I mean it's intentional being it really intentional about picking and choosing what else your clients need so thinking about your clients first because that's what we should always be doing we think about our clients first and their needs make a list and start paying attention to things that might coordinate with you with your brand or also might might not have anything to do with your brand but you know your customers buy and need as well too so you know how can building your network or relationships um, help your business this is I guess this is the meat and potatoes really understanding that if you find a partner, you find people, let's just say you narrow it down to, I don't know, somebody else, and that one person you want to kind of really get to know. I, again, I think we need multiple relationships. We need multiple people in different industries. So maybe the spa down the street and the coffee shop, and we need different people who know us and know what we do and are, we're easy to refer we want to be easy to refer they want to trust us as well too. So we want to make sure we're not hodgepodgey winging it. We're not fly by night operations. We want to really have our, our, our brand and our business running well. And this is the key. This is what's happening right now in retail. It's the retailers that just are wishy-washy and winging it that are not, they're not making a good they're not lasting. <laughs> these are these are there's a lot of trouble in paradise, if you will, with retailers that are not relationship buildings. They're not trustable, maybe to their customers and maybe to other people referring. And again, I think that's a whole other podcast we could get into. But just if your brand and you know you're building a brand and you're doing the thing and you've got regular hours and you're trustworthy in your community, other people in your community want to refer you. Other people in 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 around need to know about you so get out of your shop and let's make these connections happen so ways that this works for you and your customer and them because it's going to be an ROI for everybody right is you know different ways of like cross-referencing each other so I'm going to pick one other brand that I I trust and my I, I trust to send my clients there and they'll trust to send their clients to me and again this takes intentional work and we want to make sure that that's all, you know, it feels good. Social media. So it's sharing each other on social media, newsletters, website, you know, we can share each other's, we can become like literal partners. Like we talk, like we make a decision on, okay, this is what we're going to do. We have discussions on how we're going to do it. We might want to have bag stuffers for each other. You know, we're sharing or counter rack, you know, rack cards or postcards or whatever, tags or business cards, whatever it is you're sharing, come up with something and you can work as well different ways. It can be multiple, multiple stores that you're working with or uh, multiple businesses, I should say. And this works in different ways. Events, you could run an event together. So maybe there's a local scavenger hunt in your town where everybody's going to go in and we're all going to, we're all going to sh share all of this, you know, goodness, if you will, or whatever the event is. You could offer discounts for each other on like either in a bag, a bag stuffer way or on your, each other's websites. Like there's just different ways that you can collaborate 
and build relationships with other brands or other businesses. This helps you get new customers in the door and it also builds your reputation. There's Those are two different things. Sometimes we, I think sometimes we think we have a reputation in our town, but we don't always. So, you know, being a good neighbor, being a good neighbor is a really good thing. So the other thing you can collaborate with people is become each other's raving fans. And I love seeing this happen and I have been seeing it happen every now and then. I can see, I see this happening. So if you find another brand, again, locally or something that your customers, obviously you have to align with and your customers have to align with, that's something that you'll love. I I always say like, I just want to feel good when I work with people too. So I want to feel good. You know, you can reach out, maybe you're hosting events together. Maybe you're going to their shop, they're coming to your shop. Maybe you're doing lives together on Instagram. Maybe you're you're becoming each other's go-to expert. So what I mean is if you are a yarn shop and I am a coffee shop and I don't know, we're going to become like each other's biggest fans. Like, you know, I'm going to say all the time to everybody that, you know, that we're going to go over there and I'm going to teach your people how to make coffee. Or maybe we're going to have an event at the coffee shop for the yarn coming in and I'm trying to think, what do we knit? (laughs) That's what I'm trying to say. We're going to have a social hour. Maybe that's what's going to happen. And there's just different things that we can do. How can you find somebody who's your raving fan? I have a client who owns a gourmet food shop and she partnered, I guess, became a raving fan of a local kitchen shop where they, you know, sell all the kitchen goods and they just they're forever each other's raving fans and they're back and forth all the time and the kitchen shop shares recipes from the gourmet food shop and like you can see where that partnership is beautiful right I mean it's a really really makes sense maybe your bookshop and a coffee shop maybe it is you know and they actually the gourmet food shop she actually shared their email list every now and then so not the list itself, because there's, I think there's kind of some integrity around that, but shares information for the kitchen store on her, to her email list. So they put ads on each other's websites. They do all kinds of cool things. So there's different ways of collaborating with and becoming each other's raving fans. And again, this is relationship marketing. This, you know, is not necessarily costing anybody anything other than building cool relationships in town and in amongst themselves. So the other thing that there's an opportunity around building, you know, relationships and and why and why and how it works or how it can work well is there's an opportunity for a, maybe a benefit for your clients and or an income stream for you. So you could become a referral, a referral partner and literally in an affiliate format, an affiliate or referral partner program. Um, maybe they're just giving discounts. We see it all the time. So I'm trying to think of an example right now, but a good a good example is, for example, okay, a client a client I used to work with sold upholstery fabric. She like she was like the queen of upholstery fabric at <laughs> her store, and she did it online and all these things, but she didn't teach anything about how to use it. She knew how and you know all that kind of thing. Well, there was another person who had an upholstery school, school, education, course, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, how to's and all that kind of thing. And she became, they became sort of partners. They they share each other's information, just like I mentioned earlier. But also she gets a discount. Her her clients get a discount, whatever it is, off of, you know, by using an affiliate link if they want to take any of Susie's courses, uh, Susie's not her name, <laughs> Susie's courses. And in in return, the upholstery fabric store gets a percentage, gets a gets a, a fee, gets a referral fee back. So it's a win win. Her clients are happy. She gets a you know, she gets happy. And it's a really good aligned collaboration. This isn't just like, I'm gonna take any old affiliate or referral. There's local if you're a local vintage shop, maybe there's an opportunity to become a referral partner for a local moving company. You're doing your clients a favor. And then, you know, in turn, maybe they're going to mention you and there's there's or give you, you know, a discount or give you something. Just think about different ways and of different ways in different companies that you can work with each other. So there can be a really goodwill thing, a goodwill, goodwill thing. Is that the right word? I don't know. So a goodwill feeling, maybe that's the right way I want to say it with your clients when they get a discount on these other products. And it also 
again, can help you maybe with an income stream and feel a little bit better. It does work locally and it does work maybe if you have like this online course person uh, who actually I think is in her community as well too. Okay, so one of the things, the actions I guess that you can take away hopefully from this session is how to get started. Like how do we find those people? So I really think you have to remember to build your know, like, and trust among fellow business owners. So I'm not referring you if I don't trust you, as I mentioned earlier. So really making sure that, you know, you are referable and, and you can ask yourself that question. You know, if you are running a serious business or not, most of you, if you're listening, you're growing your business, I would say you're probably a great fit and you align, you know, you're aligned with a good business model. So Here's the silly thing. Just just ask, just make a list of who or think about who else you can align with and just ask, reach out. Sometimes I like to say, don't do like cold ass, like, hey, you want to partner with me? We've never met. You're cold. But, you know, if you're following them, if you've been a follower of theirs, if you've maybe met them in a local networking community or, you know, maybe you just know each other through somebody else or, and, and it's, you know, again, as I mentioned at the top of the show, you know, it can be, it can be scary trying new things, but if you've never done it, just ask somebody, people are human and kind. If somebody asked you, and maybe it's not a good fit. Maybe it's not in their bandwidth. It's not something they want to do. They don't have anything that they can, you know, they're just not interested. Maybe they have a lack mindset too. Let me just whole other podcast on there. So there are people who have lack mindset. They don't want to share. They don't want to talk about another business because maybe they'll go spend money over there and then they won't spend all their money with me there. That's a huge lack mindset because there's power in collaborations. But And you, and maybe you don't know that, maybe you don't know that about them. So that's okay. They might say, no, this doesn't work. You know, it's just not going to fit. Thank you for asking is what I would say. If somebody asked me, I would say, thank you for asking. It's not a good fit right now, but thank you for asking. But don't, you know, don't be afraid to ask and don't be afraid of the golden no, as we like to say. The golden no means if something says, if there's a door that closes, there's usually because there's a reason there's a better yes on the other side. So don't be afraid of that. Join local, um, business groups join go to local things as we talked about in the visibility series um I think the third episode the third podcast in that series I talk a lot about being local and it's really important to be known in your community it's so important we overlook that so much and it's you know it's just a really golden opportunity to, again to be known so just so that you can kind of get to know people and see what's going on you can join an online biz community with other business owners and again this doesn't have to just be locally maybe we're doing something with somebody you know collaborating with another brand that's an online brand or that's down the road or that's in another state or you know in another place it doesn't matter sometimes depending on what your need is so your clients might benefit from meeting other business owners right and again thinking again as I mentioned your clients your clients your clients your customers those people that walk in the door every day how will they benefit from these relationships it's all about them It's all about them. So, and if you're an inner circle member, feel free to post inside the inner circle and source out if you're looking for some people to collaborate with, feel free to do a post on that or, you know, add a post anytime inside the retailers inner circle. That's what we do there. We collaborate and we do, there's a lot of collaborations that happen inside the inner circle and don't be afraid, right? Don't be afraid. So put it on your calendar if you can as an action step today from this, maybe hopefully, hopefully nudged you to think about relationship marketing and think about three to five people that you could reach out to. I'm going to go back actually before I give the next step. Also thinking about when you're at trade shows, when you're out in, you know, in the industry, when you're in the industry with other industry people, of course, those are really great places as well too. Um, I've didn't think of that until as I was saying the action steps but anyhow so your action steps today three to five think think of three to five businesses that would really benefit your clients where else are they hanging out or what else do they need whether it's local or whether it's a little bit more I'm saying global but I mean an expansive maybe it's in another community maybe you're going to maybe you're building your destination location and you want to you know you want to you want to collaborate with somebody in the next town over so you can bring people back and forth from different towns which 
is a wonderful strategy to become a destination location. So thinking about that, just start thinking about brands and other businesses that you want to connect with. And again, adding that to your CEO date. I actually have so many stories and we don't have time on this podcast today to share you know so many good things that have happened to retailers that I know to myself personally my you know my net like my network and I'm not out networking it always sounds like I hate that word but I'm not out networking I'm just trying to put myself in the room sometimes with those with other people and amazing things happen when you put yourself in the room with other people or at least you get in front of them and they know who you are and you can say hello and then you're not like this you know cold calling whatever if you do mention things I, I personally I always joke and say I've been on like dozens of podcasts and I've never pitched a podcast like I've never pitched and by that I mean I've never cold called And yet I probably will at some point, but it's all been invites from people I've met. And again, putting myself in the room every now and then attending events and being part of my industry and um, in my business groups and, you know, those kinds of things, they matter. And that's what will help you, you know, sort of get the connection. Even if you don't know the person, you know, even if you don't know the person, I have seen some of my clients work with influencers or I have seen some of my clients become influencers. So maybe there are people who want who want to work with you because of your influence. So think of that as well too, right? So again, if you can help somebody else because you are an influencer in your community, and I know sometimes we balk at that. <laughs> I have had several people say, oh, I hate being called an influencer. But, you know, another bonus and benefit of becoming a referable person or somebody that people want to refer to again helping your clients it might be a discount for your clients might be a referral back to you but and you know there's all kinds of opportunities there again for you to share your audience with people or for maybe you to go into their audience and have a chat or something along that lines so anyway your action steps today and I'd love for you to connect with me on Instagram and tell me if you took any action on this or if anything sparked from this podcast your action steps are again to reach out and think about three to five just make it easy for yourself three to five people brands businesses other you know other other opportunities that are out there for you don't overthink it just make a list and then take action to reach out or see if there's a connection there how you can sort of start that process of getting to know those people maybe you need to put yourself in the room like maybe the inner circle or maybe in a conference or maybe you just need to go follow them on Instagram or be intentional or get out of your shop go down the road and introduce yourself those are some steps that you can take to get in front of and get known by people all right my friends have a great week thank you for being here don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss miss any new updates and any new podcasts coming out we try to launch them every Monday and please leave a review. If you have not left a review for us, it means the world to us and it gets helps us get found by other podcast listeners. So, and they're hopefully just as awesome as you are. Have a great week. See you soon. Well, that's it for this week's episode of the Creative Shop Talk podcast. I'm so glad that you're here to join us this week and I hope you found value in what we're sharing here. I want to remind you that our website has all of the show notes you can find it at wendybatten.com slash podcast everything that you need to hear about today's podcast is there also an opportunity if you need to reach out to me if I can support you in any way whatsoever please feel free to reach out so thanks for joining us please leave a review subscribe if you can and never miss an episode we hope to see you back here again next week thanks my friend have a great week